cross-sectioning time. Uh, we're looking down upon an old circuit board here, and if I just zoom in, I can see four diodes. Uh, look like they're probably power diodes of some sort. Let's uh, take one off the board uh, and cross-section it to see how it was assembled. Let's see. First things first, fortunately the diode was marked 1N5817 and allows me to pull up a typical data sheet uh, and it allows me to understand that it's a Schottky barrier diode. That's going to be an important hint. Uh, Schottky barrier diodes are constructed from an endote bit of silicon. Then the other side of the diode uh, is a metal contact, uh, unlike a silicon diode where it's uh, endoped and p-doped silicon. Uh, the Schottky barrier diode has a much lower forward voltage drop. Let's see. Um, let's uh, take a look at how to do the cross-sectioning. You don't need much in terms of sophisticated equipment. Uh, let's uh, go through that cross-sectioning process and then we'll study the photograph. So sample prep's really straightforward. I just used some dollar store epoxy and pour it into a small little container and drop the component in. Uh, you got to be careful not to mix in too many bubbles, otherwise you have to do a second step with a vacuum pump to uh, take the bubbles out of the epoxy, uh, degas it. Uh, anyways, you eventually of course end up uh, with this um, and then I just go over to a surface plate that's just a chunk of granite that's been ground very flat. Um, and then I get a series of sandpaper. I start with 100 grit sandpaper, then 200, then 400, then 600 grit. And uh, of course each grit as it goes higher becomes finer and finer. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful with this process. You got to be, uh, take your time. The epoxy will turn into sort of a goo if you uh, uh, take it down too fast. Okay, after about half an hour of lapping you end up with uh, essentially is half a diode. And uh, Let's take a picture looking straight down and what we can see of course are the uh, the leads of the left and right going into the uh, the black body the epoxy and if you look really close to the center there you can see a little chunk of silicon now there's going to be a, a metal to silicon contact and to uh, study that in a bit better detail let's just go over to a microscope photograph and uh, we can see sort of metal on both sides one's just going to be connecting to the bulk silicon so the lead can make contact and the other one's the actual shot key uh, interface Okay, so the question, of course, now is which was the anode and which is the cathode, and of course I have a multimeter which can measure uh, diodes. Uh, and this diode is still entirely functional, so if I was to put the red probe here and the black probe here, of course you can see it at uh, 0.1 volts. And if we reverse it, uh, it will act like a diode and it will stay uh, as an open circuit. So, uh, I know this side here is the anode, and I know this side here is the cathode. Okay, well now that we know the cathode is on the left-hand side, that means the uh, metal to silicon interface must be on the right-hand side of the uh, silicon die. And uh, it'll be slightly more doped in that interface, and then it's just bulk silicon connecting onto the left. And uh, that gives us a good idea as to what an internal construction of a typical power Schottky diode rectifier looks like.